Genesis chapter number 3. Genesis chapter number 3 and we're going to uh, uh, pick something that the Lord just, you know, whispered into my spirit yesterday and I believe it will be a great uh, blessing. Uh, Genesis chapter 3 verses 8 and verses 9. Genesis chapter 3 verses 8 and verses 9. Can you read with me 1, 2, 3? The Bible says, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called Adam and said to him, Where are you? Father, rest on your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of God. Happy Father's Day, fathers. You see, mothers, it's always unfair. It's always unfair. It's not a problem. You always forget us. Even the shops knows that, you know, Father's Day is never the sole. I mean, there's never a big sale. Uh, mother's Day, you, you hear it months <laughs> Before it gets there, praise God. Um, this morning I have a word um, and um, it is uh, specifically addressed to a category uh, of people uh, of a certain particular gender. But I do believe uh, somehow, somewhere, uh, it is going to help us, uh, uh, even for those of you uh, that may not be of the specific gender, but get the lessons that are in this uh, teaching of this morning. My title of the sermon this morning, it's simply called, Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Last week, Prophetess Esther started a phenomenal a series on family empowerment. Uh, and as part of the uh, our knowledge of all that God required for us to be functional families, blessed families, and what are the things that can help us uh, uh, really accomplish uh, that assignment. And so my title this morning is simply, Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? The text we read this morning speaks of the incident that have happened after Adam and Eve, but specifically Eve had been deceived by Satan, who represents in this story as a as a as a snake. And the Bible says that after hearing the voice of the snake, they realized that they were naked because they had sinned against God. And so God walking in the cool of the evening. It came to pass that they heard God walking in the garden and they decided to go hide themselves from his presence. There is something about sin that always wants you to withdraw. There is always something about sin that wants you to go away. There is something about sin that always want to take you far from where God is. And that's why a sin can never be in the same direction with God. And so uh, if you want to walk away from sin, just choose to walk in the direction of God. It will never be in the direction of God. Sin will never be in the direction of you doing the will of God. Sin can never be in the direction of you walking the path of God. But sin will always be in the direction of us walking in our own will, walking in our own ambition, walking in our own path, and, and walking into our own mindset. And so uh, it is very important that they went, they went and hidden themselves from the Lord's presence. And there were Adam and Eve. But when God will show up, he, 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 is, 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 he knows that it is Adam and Eve that he doesn't see, but the question is posed to one person. And he said, Adam, where are you? In verses 8, it says, Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of God. But in verses 9, God said, Adam, 
where are you? Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? I have come to realize that one of the major problem in the life of Adam and in the first family of this of the of the world if not uh the 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 very first family god has ever brought uh the first problem that i've come to notice jose is the absence of adam because minister treasure i ask myself where is adam when eve is talking to the snake my question is, where is Adam when Cain Cain is killing his brother Abel? Where is where is Adam in all these shocking, horrible stories that are taking place in the family? I do not see Adam. When God comes, of course, he won't ask the question to Eve because he had given responsibility. He has given headship. He has given leadership to the husband. And when I come for account, I don't ask those that I did not put in charge. I ask the one that I place in charge. And so if God will have a conversation further with Adam, he will ask, what is it that you have done? But in reality, it wasn't Adam who had done something. It was Eve who had done something. But something shows me that Adam absence, it is his failure to his responsibility. And so this morning I'm talking to the fathers. This morning I'm talking to the man that God has called to assume responsibilities, but they find themselves absent when they need to be present. Our generation, Papa Isaac, is, 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 is having a problem. And one of the major problems our generation that faces is absent fathers. Absent fathers. There are some fathers that are present in the home, but absent emotionally, absent financially, absent from all responsibility. You see them. But they are not there. And so I'm not just talking about the fathers who are not physically in the house. But I'm also talking to the fathers that are present while being absent. If God is asking the question, Adam, where are you? Number one, it signifies that I cannot find you where I left you. Adam, where are you? It means I put you here, but when I come looking for you in the place where I put you, I don't see you. Number two, this question is making us wonder and say, you know, you can ask a person where they are when you have searched for them everywhere possible and still can't find them. Number one, they are not where you left them. Number two, you have searched for every place as possible where you can think of them being, you still did not find them. Meaning that I'm not asking because I did not find you where I placed you. I am asking because every possible place is where I thought I could find you, I still didn't find you. Number three, God is asking this question. Because when the situation at hand speaks louder of your absence. God is asking Adam, where are you? Because what God is seeing happening in his family, it is speaking of his absence. There are times people don't, have, don't need to know that you are not there. But the events that happens in families, happens in your home, speaks of your absence. If you had been there, if you were there, if you had showed up, if you were present, such and such wouldn't have happened. While preparing my sermon, I went 
and I went to just check some statistics. According to the National Fatherhood Organization in the U.S., it says involved dads improve their children's overall emotion and social being. It says that children with involved fathers are less likely, are less likely to be mistreated. Children with involved fathers are less likely to be treated, mistreated. It says that children who live with their dad often do better in school. Adolescent teens who live with their fathers are less likely to carry guns or deal with drugs. Children with involved dads reduce mom's parenting stress. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 19.5 million children, which represent one in four children in the U.S., live without a father in the house. You see four children, one of them don't have a father in the house. Children with imprisoned fathers are more likely to experience depression. Children with imprisoned fathers are more likely to have depression. Children living without a father in the home are 47 likely to end up in poverty. Men with absent fathers are more likely to become absent fathers themselves. There is always a pattern to what people do. Men with absent fathers are more likely to become absent fathers themselves. Women with absent fathers are more likely to have children with absent fathers. God have mercy. Your daughter grew up without a father. She is most likely, according to this research, to also have children with an absent father. This is not spiritual bondage. This is just research. Boys have fewer behavior problems and girls have fewer psychological problems when they have a dad involved in their life. And it says here, father's absence is to blame for many of our most social ills affecting children. There is an old ad or adage that says, correlation does not imply causation does not imply the effect of a father's absence sometimes the result of a father's absence are more far more damaging than the presence of the child itself and to close children living with a female aided homes with no spouse present work four times over time which gives them with less time to spend with their children these are just some few specifics to say to us when an adam is absent there is chaos that happens one of the first responsibilities we must understand as men and especially as fathers one of the most first responsibility that God has given us, number one, is that God has placed us as priests of our homes. Every father 
is a pastor of his family. Pastor, what are you talking about? Every father is what? A pastor, a priest of his own. Before the pastor can bless your children, before your pastor can teach your children, you are the first one to commence such work and such blessing. Unfortunately, with the reality of what happens in church is that we are cursed in our own families. And then now a pastor has to come and try to fix what has failed in the family. Sometimes we deal with issues in the church. It has nothing we do with the spiritual problem. It has everything to do with the failure of something that should have been taught at home. Sometimes you look at people, grown up, the way they behave in, in, in public, the way they act around people. You can tell that this is not just them growing up this way. It shows the absence of someone that was meant to teach. A father has a spiritual responsibility to be a priest over his own house. I said somebody... I said to somebody this morning, you are a father. Don't leave that duty only to mother. You have a duty to instruct, to lead, to pray, and to bless your family. I like Proverbs chapter 1 and verses 8, if I can have it. Proverbs chapter 1 and verses 8. I was just reading it before I climbed up on the pulpit. It says this, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 8. It says, My son, hear the instruction of who? Hear the instruction of your father. But when the father cannot speak, whose instruction is your child getting? If the, if the father is quiet... When it should be the one instructing the child, just let me just tell you this. One way or the other, the child will learn. But you must use the privilege God gives you to make sure that it is not another source that teach your child what you should be the one teaching. Because you do not know the intention. You are the one that loves your child. Nobody will ever love your child better than yourself. So the Bible says, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law or the counsel of your mother. Verses 9, for they are a graceful ornament on your head and chains on your neck. Meaning that this would be symbol of pride and, 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 and favor and, and people will be able to notice them from far because a crown is noticeable from far. It shows you are a king. It shows your position. It shows who you are. But for it to be uh, shown in public, the child must be able to hear the instruction. But when the child cannot have a father who teaches the instruction, then what happens? Proverbs chapter 2 and verses, I believe, verses 3. Proverbs 2. Let's start from verses 1. It said, my son, if you receive my words and treasure my commandment within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry for discernment and lift your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is not taught in the church. It should first be taught at all. Listen, let us not uh, miss the opportunity 
that God gives to our children while they're still young. They have the ability to hear what you say. They have the ability to, 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 to give and pay attention to whatever instruction you're given. When I came back home and, and we are realizing that we are in this series, every single night I am having a wisdom class with my children because I want to impart wisdom not only to nations but also impart wisdom into their life. Giving certain key principles that nobody will ever teach them unless they love them. There are certain things, don't leave it the responsibility of your school to teach your kid. Don't leave it the responsibility of your aunties to teach them. Don't leave it the responsibility of anybody else. Make it your own responsibility. Because in this world, one way or the other, your children will learn. And it's very important. As a priest, God sees us as source because a father is a source. A source of wisdom. A source of strength. Your children should be able to see you and not wanting to go any other place because everything they need, they find it in their father. Adam, I wish you had been there. Maybe your praises would have stopped Cain from killing From killing Abel. I asked myself. Maybe if. Jacob would have walked with his sons. And teach them love. They wouldn't have such a heart of jealousy. You know minister treasure. I've come to realize that some of the ills. We complain about families. Are encouraged by parents. Some of the ills. Some of the issues, some of the problems we deal with as families are somehow encouraged by parents. A parent shouldn't be able to show preference. Your children shouldn't be able to detect or even tell who does the father love more. Love can have different expression, of course. The way I love my son, Altivan, is not the same way. Uh, it's not the same way I express my love to Sophia. Sophia is very affectionate. So is Altivan. But the affection in the way Sophia receives it is never the same way with the way Altivan receives it. But in, in your way to show affection, you must never make sure, you must never put yourself in a position where your children begin to behave like you are loving them less. My wife and I were shocked about two years ago or so we are just having evening conversation around the table. And, and then Altivan says, I feel like you, you guys don't give me 100% love. I ask, I ask him, well, what do you mean 100% love? And then he began to say, uh, this, uh, when, you, when I do this, when I do this, when I do this, when I do that, when I do this, when I do that. It is weird that I understand that Love as a language. And sometimes you're speaking a language that is different to your sons. And you're thinking you understand it is an act of love. But without realizing that he's speaking a totally different love. In premarital counseling, I teach about the subject of five languages of love. While I was just shopping for a book and so forth and so on, I realized that there was also five languages kids series. I did everything for my children equally, but one perceived it as love, another did not perceive it as love. He needs what? He needs a game, we buy him. He needs what? He needs a shoe, we get him. He needs what? We need. But for him, it is better than that. He wants time. Altivan wants time. Gifts, he feels like it's your responsibility to do. When you, when you buy him a new thing, it feels like, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do as a father. But when you give him the gift of time, he wants a family movie night. We are not on our phones. All of us are watching a movie that he proposed. He feels love. But then now, when you come to a place, you, you are saying, I bought you this, I bought you that, I bought you this. It should be enough. We are going to have a child that is going to 
grow with scars in his heart, thinking that you have failed him, but while you're thinking that you were right all along. The problem with our fathers is that they were always right. I wonder if sometimes they look back and ask themselves, did I get it wrong somewhere? But for, for, for the way I know them. Uh, <laughs> there are certain things I was saying that we shouldn't encourage and that our children should never pick. Do you know that the problem of Joseph did not start with his dreams? It started when the father gave him a coat of many colors. I understand that Joseph is the first son of the woman you loved. Because remember, Jacob was cheated by his father-in-law. You know, instead of him getting uh, uh, Rachel, uh, he got what? Leah. And then he had to do at least four kids or five kids with Leah before uh, he finally was able to get Rachel. And Rachel is a, is, is a wife that Jacob loved all along. And then when he gives him uh, uh, a firstborn, he cannot wait to show affection. He wants everyone to know that this is, all of you, I don't know what happened. But... Uh, <laughs> I will tell you straight up, Joe, for, for, for us, Joe has had the best of all of us experience. I mean, I, he, he says he struggles, but for us, he has had the best of our fathers, the best of our parents. There are certain things we, we, we couldn't even have uh, the courage to ask. <laughs> so I, I was talking about Joseph, by the way. <laughs> so Joseph has and receives a quote that he did not ask but which will be the birth of issues in his life because all of it a father couldn't wait to express his love my wife and I have decided that if we cannot do it for both of them let's not rather do it because sometimes I, I can have something that I see it is for one. But let's rather keep it until we can buy for the other. Because you don't want to send the wrong message. Sometimes siblings' hatred begins with the disposition of their fathers toward their children. Your child shouldn't feel less or more love than the other, that it needs another's absence to validate their presence. I am sure that what Cain was dealing with, he said, if at least I can kill him, then there won't be any comparison. If, if it's just going to be me, then it's going to be fine. The, I pray in the name of Jesus that we, we as fathers do not create a need in our children for one child to be absent, for us to feel like we are heard. For your son to hear like he's heard. For your daughter to hear like she is heard. Most African cultures value sons more than the daughters. Now, God may have graced you with sons, but God may have graced you with daughters. God may have graced you with both. But don't incline your cultural roots so much that you feel like your daughter is less of a human because you have a son. What you will create then is the daughter will wish for the absence of the son so that at least a voice can be heard. Adam, where are you? When your child is feeling like he needs his brother's absence in order for him to have his offering approved. Maybe since we have had uh, two offerings, one on your side and his own was approved and mine wasn't approved and maybe if I kill him, then they will never have such incident where they have to compare. Because one of the key 
killer of, of gifts, originality, uniqueness, is always comparison. When your children have to be, feel like they have to look elsewhere. I told my kids this week, your happiness does not depend on what you wish you had. Your happiness depends on what you are grateful for. You will never have everything in life. And if you are constantly looking at what your friends have in order for you to determine how happy you must be for yourself because you tell yourself, maybe when I have it, when I have what she has, when I have what he has, then I will be happy. We are making, sh we, are, we are bringing into the world children that will forever grow up without ever finding, with happiness being postponed always in the future a father is a source a source of unity don't be the kind of father that speaks this to this one then uh, don't uh, i say that this your brother is is a shame and then you go there i was with your brother you were saying this about you believe you me they are fathers who act like that. They are the source of division. I know every family has problems. But our own African families have more problems. Because sometimes there's just way too many expectations. And when a father does not play the role of a unifier... I like it, Minister Isaac, because Jacob finally got it. Because two times, Joseph will speak of the dream. The third time, the Bible said, he rebuked him. He rebuked the child, but he kept the dream at heart. Meaning that, I don't want you to think that you are superior to your brothers because of these dreams you've started to have. But in his heart, in you, there's something special about it. As fathers, we must be able to show the way and, and say to our children, I, I, I understand you are gifted. I understand this, this and that. But don't let it get into your head because you're not special than your brothers. Am I talking to somebody? Adam, where are you? Where are you? Could it be that Satan always have a window in the absence of the father? There are certain things that people will never say to your children if you are present. There are certain uh, 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 Things that will never be done when you are present. But the absence of Adam gave Satan a window. I always wonder, Papagi, why is it that if Satan really wanted them to sin, let him go to the man, he's the, he's the head of the house, scripture says so. Women power, yes. <laughs> Single ladies. You are married. The husband is there. No, we are, we are the same level. Yes, we are the same level before God. God said the husband is. Mama said about it already, so I won't bother you with that. When God was giving instruction, Papa Gi, to... Um, Adam, Eve was not present. But it was Adam's responsibility to say to Eve what God had said to him that was crucial to their position in the garden. You cannot withhold important information 
and judge it important. Don't just say, oh, uh, by the way, that tree we shouldn't also get. No, start with that. If I forget everything I say, please, in my absence, never. Because there are things we deem important that our kids don't deem important. Now, Satan won't go to a person that deems it important. Satan will go to a person that does not deem it important. He has the information, but does not deem the information important. Eve knew what God said, but she did not carry it at the same value with Adam. And information you hear from the source, and information you hear from the third party is never on the same value of in, in, in as much as or in as far as our responsibility is concerned. And that's why so many people, because they have not ever heard it from their fathers, they neglect it. Because they have not heard it from the person they neglect. They know the information, but they just didn't think it was important. So he goes to the person that does not deem it important. I don't say that's what the Bible says. I just imagine or suggest. Did God really? Because the question here is not to deny what you know, but is to question the source. Did God really say? If you eat of this tree, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you should eat, but I'm just asking, were you there when he said it? No, uh, I'm not sure. Sometimes uh, Adam also have just, you know, he speaks things that don't make sense. Like in Lingala, they will say, as I happen, I believe Like, you know. Say, ah, God knew. The day you will eat of this tree, you will become like him. But what they ignored, in Genesis 1, verses 28, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish, over the animals, over the birds, over, the, over whatsoever that creeps on the face of the earth. Let them have dominion. Man was already like God, but he went to the woman who did not hear it from God. And so, decide as family, decide as fathers, to always be the voice from whom wisdom is heard in your house. Your child comes with certain things. The first question you ask, where did you eat from? Before I ask, uh, answer, you know, kids always come, Daddy, is it true? Before I tell you it's true or false, I want to know who told you. Because Adam will come uh, Shuka, with an information that never came out of God's mouth. And his response showed or told God somebody else had been talking. Say, we were naked. God does not say, okay, where are you now? He said, who told you? You were naked. Meaning that man has had another source apart from Abba. And every time man decides to have another source than his father, there is a problem. Every time your children have another source than you as a parent, there is a problem. Every time the things they gotta learn, it is not through the, the, the channels you orchestrate, the channels you organize, there is a problem. And that's why this Sunday morning, I am challenging us fathers not to be absent. Not to be absent. Thank God for those of us that somehow South Africa has also helped us to get involved into our wife's pregnant journey. For others, even where you are going to give birth, it's just the hospital later will call me, oh, she gave birth. I know fathers that did not even know the gender of their kids. 
never been single once at a checkup or doctor's appointments. The life of a, of a child does not begin at his birth. It begins at conception. You cannot let your woman, your, your wife, go at all these experiences and not have a father who's standing by her. And guess what? We are always the one that is very proud. <laughs> he really looks like me. This is his name. Because responsibility demands for us to response, to respond. Responsibility demands for us to respond. You got to answer. Responsibility demands for us to respond. And maybe for this Sunday, I want to close with this. A father is a provider. A father is a provider. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 7 to verses 8, it says, Give the people these instructions so that no one may be open to blame. Anyone. I want, I want you to, to, to read it. So, it's not what Pastor Gilad said, but it's the Bible. Eight, please read with me if anyone does not provide for his own especially those of his household he has denied the faith and is worse a father is more than just a janitor Father is more than a priest. Provider is a provider. And scripture says, if anyone who is unable doesn't specify whether he has a job or not, doesn't specify whether he is making six figures or not, doesn't specify whether he's working in a very high uh, sentence office with AC if you are a father and you are unable to provide for your own household the Bible said that act is you denying your faith and you are worse than an unbelief I thank God for strong women I thank God for single mothers that have been riding the horse with almost just three legs. Have to balance emotions, finances, and so forth and so on. But a father that is alive, don't choose to be absent in your kid's life. The gift of your presence is more than the gift you give your kids on Christmas. There is something that your kids need more than your money. All the ills in the life in the family of Adam was due to his absence. Absent on all the important steps of your children's life. There are some children that do not have a picture with their father present and their graduation. Any graduation. And the father is some way with a side cheek some way. Your, your family is suffering some way and you are busy enjoying Dubai. There are children that do not have shoes for, 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 for school. But when you check their father's Instagram, is this car today, that car tomorrow? Is this suit today, that suit tomorrow? The Bible says such men 
are worse. If unbeliever is the lowest after unbeliever, and as men of this house, I'm challenging us to show up. As men of this house, I'm challenging us to do it. Sure. Things may have happened and you're not together with the fathers of your kids anymore. But don't deny your children the gift of their father's presence. Whatever arrangement you may have, whatever it is, there are some parents that are the fathers that abuse their own kids. Those are not even worthy of the name father. And understand you are protecting your children. But at some point, no matter how bad their dad may be, they will just wish to know and understand this. I close with this story. The year I'm getting married, 2010. Around November, I am managing my dad's website and his activities. I receive an email. And that email says, I'm looking if you are the relative of so and so. And since... Uh, My dad has uh, had a young brother that died, I think I was nine or ten. They loved, him, they, loved him, they loved him a lot. And so before he died, he had a child with a Japanese woman. So for years, they had lost contact with the family and then the child was growing up. Of course, the mother was very strong. She provided for her child. She, she made sure that, you know, whatever uh, the child needs, she, and the child was about to go to university when they wrote to us. It had been close to 10 years that they did not have any, any uh, contact with us as a family. And so I get this email, and the lady is trying to confirm if we are the relative of, his, of her dead husband. And I write back and I said, Yes. In fact, my dad and his siblings were always asking how would they ever get in touch with such uh, a woman. They knew that they had, a, they had a niece, but where is she? How is she? What is she doing? And then we got that email. I sent it across the family and, uh, and everybody was excited. And then I told her that, in fact, you know, my dad is coming, you know, for, for my wedding. Uh, I'm getting married December 19th. Uh, she said, if you can allow us, please, we would like to come to the wedding so we meet the rest of the family because your cousin has been asking a lot of questions about his dead side that I am unable to ask, to answer. Wedding arrangement continued December. I remember them coming home and then we welcomed them. They had booked uh, the hotel we dropped them at the hotel. My father was emotional and excited at the same time. And since he was the only one of his siblings that were here, uh, we did the wedding. And after the wedding, they had to go. They had about a week with us after the wedding. And so we are staying at home. I think it was a Sunday or Monday after the wedding. They come at home. Uh, and then all of this trip, was because her daughter wanted to understand certain specifics about her on the side of her fathers. So they started asking my dad question, what was he like? What did he like? Well, what, what, what did he always say when he was younger? What was his relationship with his fathers? Because in as much as the child has grown, she still felt lost in the absence of her father. She wanted to, to make sense of her history. 
make sense of what she's going make sense if what i am feeling in me is normal and it is something that is related to my father's side of the family i remember after my dad was done speaking and telling relating stories for the first time in a long time i see my father break down loud crying and our cousin his niece came and hugged him very strong and she said thank you for healing my wounds the mother was providing everything was there but there was a missing puzzle they went back the child is fine she never had intention to come back to Africa but that trip was because the missing puzzle was I want to know my father even in his absence fathers there is more on us than you can imagine and God is asking us where are you I know it is not just you <laughs> Who's hiding? It is you and Eve. But the responsibility is not on Eve. The responsibility is not what the woman did to you. The responsibility is not what life happened to you. The responsibility is why are you not where I left you? Fathers, you are selling chippies on the corner. Show up for your kid. You are a mechanic. Show up for a kid. You're just one of those people that do not know how the day will end. But every day somehow you go out and say, whatever I find, let me do it. Show up for your kid. More than the gift of money. More than the gift of clothes. More than the gift of paying for their school. More than the gift of making sure that they have their trips and their holidays. Give them the gift of your presence. I cannot always come home tired. I need to take time and be with my children. Because there are certain things they will never learn from anybody else. Not from those that God has set over their life as one that he loves. This morning, I'm speaking to those of you that may not have fathers. And say to you. That God will always place a father figure in your life to play the role of what your father could have done. Most of all, we have our heavenly father who provides to all of our needs. His name is Emmanuel. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He doesn't disappear when it gets tough. His presence is more felt when the storm and the wind blows. He is alive and he is with you. And as even our close today, Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Come out of a hiding. Your family needs you. May God bless your word. Jesus name.